and welcome to God Science. I'm Mike Sale. I've got a test tomorrow, and I'm having some trouble with Newton's first law of motion. One of my buddies told me I should think of a hockey puck, whatever that means. So here I am. Excuse me, Mike. I don't mean to intrude, but I couldn't help overhearing. Would you like some assistance? That's Sim, the Got Science Simulator. That'd be great, Sim. What do you have in mind? Your friend had the right idea, Mike, but maybe you need a closer look at that puck. Okay, but this is a goalie's mask. Wait a minute. You don't seriously think I'm going down there? Cause I'm... Of course not, Mike. At least, not the way you think. As a starting point, we can summarize Newton's first law of motion by saying that an object will remain at rest, or in uniform motion, unless it's acted upon by an unbalanced force. So, this hockey puck isn't going anywhere all by itself. It will, however, move if acted upon by an unbalanced force, like this hockey stick. So why is it called an unbalanced force? It simply means that the force of the hockey stick is greater than the force of gravity that's holding the puck motionless. If the force of the stick was equal to the gravity, it would be a balanced force, and the puck would go nowhere. Ooh, okay. But what about an object in motion? I thought you'd never ask. Am I doing what I think I'm doing? Yes, Mike. You're going to demonstrate what happens to an object in motion when it's acted upon by an unbalanced force. Of course, Mike. And more importantly, you were able to see that the object in uniform motion, the puck, changed speed and direction when it was acted upon by an unbalanced force. In this case, your leg pad, waffle pad, and goalie stick. Would you care to field a few more slap shots? Um, that's okay, Sim. I think I got it. Really. Then it's on to another demonstration. Whoa. What is it? It's a perpetual motion machine of sorts. It's called an air track, and it's useful when thinking about Newton's first law. That little car looks almost like it's floating or something. It is floating, Mike. The track is covered with hundreds of tiny holes that release air. The car, as you call it, is floating on that air. So there's almost no surface friction to act upon the object in motion. And that makes a big difference. You mean because friction slows things down? Yes, for example, watch how far this large car will travel with just a gentle push. Is it going to stop? Yes, eventually. The car loses energy each time it collides with the ends of the track, and there's also air resistance involved. This system makes it easy to see the effect of an unbalanced force when the car collides with the end of the track. But what if the track continued all the way around the world? And what if we could eliminate all surface friction and air resistance? Under those conditions, could the car make it all the way around the world with just one push? Yeah, it could because the only unbalanced force would be the force that starts the car moving. So it would make it. Exactly right, Mike. It sounds like you're ready for that test. Thanks, Sim. And thank you for joining us today. For God's Science, I'm Mike Zell. We'll see you next time.